Hey guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com in New Jersey. Today is where I'm filming a very waxy video for you guys. Uh, if you like cool jackets, you probably like waxed jackets. And today I'm comparing the most popular wax jackets from the online store, Huckberry, the internet's headquarters for all things wax jacket. And also like canvas and leather and heritage goods like that. Their American made trucker jacket has come to define the genre itself. And mine has actually been worn so much, there's no more wax left on it at all. And it's done so well, this model, they've released a ton of sequels, I would call them like sequel jackets. And they asked if I wanted to compare them on video. And like an idiot, I said yes without asking for any money. So this is actually an unsponsored video. I do need to get better at all that marketing stuff. But uh, nonetheless, this is an unsponsored video, but I do really like the jackets. I've bought a lot of them myself. So I was happy to get a closer look at them. So let's start the video with their wax trucker jacket, like the trucker jacket that started it all. And then we'll look at the successes. So. This is the Flint and Tinder waxed canvas trucker jacket. Uh, Huckberry owns Flint and Tinder, which is a Los Angeles based brand. And the jacket is under 300 bucks, which is very crazy for an American made canvas jacket. I know it's made of cotton and some guys might find the claim of a great value to be questionable since this is just a cotton jacket. But look around the market for whatever reason, if you want a jacket or a bag made out of canvas and wax and made in the US, it is seldom cheaper than this. This is really solid value at about 270 bucks and it is my most worn canvas jacket. I said in my best wax jackets video that nobody watched that although there are some wax jackets better for like running around a forest, I find I wear this one the most often because it's very, it's very unassuming and very casual. Like there are a lot of dramatic wax jackets out there. If you're comparing this to like Rogue Territory's very famous one, there's something I feel a need to like coordinate an outfit around. Like I feel weird even wearing that with the hoodie. Uh, same goes for Tom Beckby's wax jacket. This one just works with just about anything you want it to. And it's fairly warm with this funky polyester flannel lining as well. And also a new thing they're doing with this jacket now, uh, this year they've added a relaxed fit, which has extra room in the body and longer sleeves and a longer length. So that's cool because like trucker style jackets, they have like a bit of a reputation for uh, being too short for some people. All right, next is the newest sequel jacket. It is the flannel lined quilted waxed trucker jacket. It's a very long name. It is quilted. Why is it quilted? So they would have places to jam in lots of insulation and make it really toasty warm. This jacket is made in America, although the eight ounce canvas on this one is made from British Millerin, which is a massively famous like a mill in the UK. They make Filson's canvas and twill. So the quilted wax trucker jacket is quilted for more insulation, so it keeps you warmer than the flannel lined one. They also sell a wool lined trucker jacket for super, super warmth but this is still like very warm and it's a better option for guys who find wool a little itchy, like me. Another interesting difference is that the body is cotton lined while the original trucker is polyester lined. So that's another reason why it's a bit pricey at 348 bucks. Right now it just comes in this camo color, but I am positive we're gonna have more colors in the future. But this is a really good option for guys who want something warmer than the original, but don't wanna chill out for the wool lined version. All right, the next waxed one I wanted to show you is the Hudson jacket. And this is the contender for folks who like the British tradition of waxed hunting jackets, uh, like Barber and Bellstaff. Those brands are like synonymous with wax jackets to a lot of folks. And this is Huckberry's entry into the foray or like the more British side of wax jackets. I like this a lot more than those British jackets, which I've never really liked. They always seem like a bit like overly complex, like too many buckles, very British dad like. The Hudson does a really good job of walking the line between outdoorsy, hunty, wildlands wax jacket and urban friendly jacket. Guys with wax jackets usually like to look outdoorsy, but as is the case with Huckberry's now discontinued Highlands jacket, sometimes it goes a bit far and you look like you belong in the countryside, just kind of wandered in off of a bus. There's nothing wrong with that, I guess. It just means that you stand out more when you're in the city, like more than you might want to. The Hudson does a great job of definitely looking like an adventurer's jacket, but it's not too out of place in the city. Like it's eye-catching. It looks like, you know, I think you look pretty dashing and rakish in it. With a beanie, you look a bit like a longshoreman, but somehow it's not over the top and you don't look like you don't belong in Manhattan. To compare it with the trucker jacket, with this, the canvas is thicker on the Hudson. This is eight ounces per square yard versus seven. The lining is 100% cotton flannel from the British mill Abraham Moons, while the trucker jacket is all polyester. Style-wise, the trucker jacket is uh, it's a bit like the short type one denim jackets of old. The Hudson is more reminiscent of the British waxed hunting jackets. But again, with the shiny buttons and the snap pockets, sometimes when I'm wearing this with a beanie, I feel like I could be wearing on a ship deck, as much as a Manhattan vlogger can. 
me. While it is longer and more old fashioned style wise, this nonetheless has a fairly modern fit. Like it's not boxy or ultra roomy like typical hunting jackets are. So that's another reason why this is uh, surprisingly city friendly. It also comes in four colors. I got blue because I have very few blue jackets I can wear with my gray Stetson hat. And uh, yeah, you better believe I wear this with my Stetson hat when I've got it out. Next is the Bighorn jacket which I'm really surprised by how much I like it. And it's the cheapest one on this list at just 198 bucks. It is cheap or, or inexpensive, I should say. Good, good value. Good value is what I should say here. This is good value because it's pretty lightweight at six ounces per square yard. That keeps the cost down. It's made in Indonesia and it's largely unlined here as well. The sleeves and pockets are lined with polyester, but the body is basically just the shell. So this is their lightweight jacket for less cold weather. Uh, this is also meant to be more youth friendly. That's what they told me. Uh, this might sound kind of funny, but it's, it's like it's longer than the trucker. The chest pockets are bigger, like you can actually fit your phone in them, unlike the trucker's chest pocket, which I can't fit my phone in, which is really annoying. And all the buttons are snaps, which makes it much more convenient for the go-go youths of the world who never have time to button their buttons. They're always dashing places to make TikToks and Discmans and that kind of thing that young people are doing. So the idea here with this jacket is to diversify the price points with the wax jackets and to diversify the weights and diversify who's buying them. Like they want this to appeal to younger people, but also for people in Southern states, warmer climates, people who can be more confident that this is not gonna be like really crazy warm for them. This is a sort of meant to be replacing the online trucker jackets they released a few years ago. I did a video on it, I hated it, and they actually discontinued it before the video was ready to post, so I just made this whole video that nobody ever saw. But I did not like it. Uh, it was unlined, really sticky and waxy. It felt gross against the skin. My sweat was always bubbling up through the jacket onto the outer and like kind of hanging out there on top of it. Didn't breathe at all. This jacket is lined in the sleeves with polyester and I wore this with a short sleeve shirt the other day and I was actually really comfortable in it. So this is uh, much better than the unlined wax jacket of old. It's cheaper than the other options on this list. It's lightweight, it's better suited for warmer weather. And the canvas is still like from British Miller and like it's still pretty good quality stuff. I really thought I wouldn't like this when I took it out of the package, but I've been wearing this the most uh, this fall. I have a long torso, so I really love the longer length of this. And maybe because of the weight, it breathes a bit better in warmer weather than the other ones here as well. So this is probably my favorite of the new wax jackets. Uh, next up is the shirt jacket, the quilted shirt jacket, uh, which I don't have. I forgot that I lent it to a friend, but not before I took all this beer, all of it. Check that out. Look, there I am walking around. Look at that. Uh, this is a shirt jacket. I can't quite work out if it's too small for me or not. I wore it on a lot of late night dog walks and it really hugs my chest, but it does it in the way that I would want a button down to. And this is a combination shirt and jacket. So maybe that's okay. I don't know. Let me know what you think of this fit. The shirt jacket is a funny category in fashion in that it can be pretty hard to work out like that, but I figure put like a really lightweight t-shirt underneath and just go in that direction. $258 for this one. It comes in five colors, including a camo if you want it. The brown one has a cool orange lining, um, but I guess I just got black, which I know kind of sucks for showing the product on video. I'm sorry about that. Naturally, the canvas is also the lightest on offer because it's a shirt jacket, so it's six ounces per square yard. The lining is polyester and packed into the quilted pocket things, uh, like the other quilted jackets on this list. It's got Prima Loft for keeping you nice and warm. Uh, it is not as warm as the other jackets. It's six ounces, it's pretty lightweight. I was a little chilly wearing this at night. But yeah, for like a super casual mid-weight layer, if you do this aesthetic, this could be the right one for you. Lastly, I also got the waxed vest. It's largely the same as the uh, quilted shirt jacket, just with no sleeves, right? It's the same weight canvas, same polyester lining, uh, premium loft insulation, just in the vest form. Costs 198 bucks. Uh, I have no experience wearing vests. I didn't have the faintest idea of how to style it, but I decided when I played it safe with a long sleeved white top, uh, I think it looks pretty good. I don't know, what do, what do you guys think? Like what, what do you wear with vests? I guess most people wear sweaters, but not really a big sweater guy. Anyway, a cool thing about vests is that it's a really handy way to have more pockets, like more storage, without getting you as warm as a jacket or giving you the hassle of dealing with like a, a backpack or a satchel or whatever. This vest also has an internal zippered pocket and hidden side pockets so you can carry your phone and wallet and stuff without giving yourself weird bulges in your jeans. It's, uh, it's my first time in a vest. It's messing with the microphone a little bit, but I actually like how a vest warms you up while still making you feel nice and mobile in the arms. Like I feel like I can get into a bar fight pretty comfortably in this. So 
Maybe I'll make this vest like more of a mainstay this year, at least during my binge drinking sessions. And that's, that's it. That's my video, that's my video, man. The big horn is probably my favorite. I just really like the, that it's longer than a trucker, but shorter than a coat length and the functionality of the bigger pockets and the price. Uh, I, I really like that big horn jacket, but they all have pros and cons. Uh, which one do you like? Let me know. And if you just went up here, subscribe for more videos about durable heritage goods, because I got a lot of them coming up.